my name is Audrey Scritchfield. Hi, my name is Isle Scritchfield. What you help a child in need? Hey, listeners, my girls and I would like to invite you to join us this holiday season in supporting a nonprofit we care very deeply about. It's called the Homeless Children's Playtime Project. If you visit wishlist.playtimeproject.org, you'll see an Amazon wish list for gifts that are requested to help a DC homeless child have a happier holiday. Again, it's wishlist.playtimeproject.org. Happy Happy holidays. holidays! Welcome to Body Kindness. Learn and grow. This is a special podcast series where we help anyone just getting started with body kindness. We're reflecting on how we have evolved since our earliest episodes. I'm Rebecca Scritchfield. And I'm Bernie Salazar. Let's get ready to spiral up together. Hey, Bernie, what's up? Hey, Becca. I am good and ready to get into Learn and Grow. Uh, I believe this episode is all about habits. Yeah. So I'm really excited to reconnect on a conversation around habits. It is, um, you know, it's really kind of one of those fundamental ways that you can reframe your focus from the numbers on the scale or the clothing size you wear and all these, you know, like sort of those aesthetic outcomes that say, hey, you're doing a good job. Right. And, you know, in fundamental to body kindness is that you can't set weight as a goal because you can't control your weight. Um, you know, and we, we know that to be true. And cause we, I mean, even just take the example of to conform to culture, we'd get more rewards if we could just control our weight and manipulate ourselves exactly to what we think would make us happier. You know, we just can't do that. Right. So then you look at what you can control and definitely your mindset, how you see yourself through a caregiving lens and being fully committed to taking care of yourself. But you still have to do things, right? So if you care about getting consistent sleep because you want better daytime energy, you're going to be looking at changing your sleep habits. And the list goes on, right? If you you feel like you want to, on the one hand, have full permission to eat and enjoy ice cream whenever you want. And also you feel like you would benefit from having, you know, snacks around that are easy to grab and taste good. And you also feel good about eating, right? So it might be getting in the habit of having a fruit bowl out on the table for grab and go snacking or um, bringing a food bag into work that has nuts and yogurts and other things that just make it easier for you to reach, you know, these tasty and energy giving snacks that you enjoy. So, so our, our, our goals can kind of be all over the map. Right. Um, but the important thing is, is that you're a driver of the goals. So yeah, you know, we, as with all the other episodes, we're going to be kind of replaying the original episode, which is by now at least a couple years old, kind of when you were at the beginning of practicing body kindness and kind of going from that mindset of body control into habits. And then we'll be reflecting in the post show um, about habits that we're still struggling with and working on today. But um, before we get to that, I would love to just hear from you on how you feel like your mindset around habits has changed over the last several years. You know, I've been able to really understand that habits do help me um, achieve my goals and assess things that I'd like to change. So I look uh, at the root of why a particular behavior is, is occurring in my life now, where maybe I didn't before. That being said, I like knowing that I, I am the driver of, of my life. And I think that a lot of times in the hustle and bustle and the busyness that is our, our day to day, we, we sometimes forget that or, or don't understand that we have that capability and that power. So that being said, you know, there's things that I am better about because I formed habits that allow me to incorporate them into my life in a way that I hadn't before. And there's still some things that I'm definitely struggling with. One thing that I've learned is, you know, right when you think you have it, you don't, and that's okay. And that there's (laughs) ways to go about assessing how to maybe start bringing that into uh, your life, but it's going to take work. So I guess all that rambling to say that 
I still have work to do, and I'm definitely going to share it with our listeners at the end of this. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think the thing is that is like one of the key things when it comes to getting into this mindset of habits is that it's going to be hard until it's easier. Um, that it's mm-hmm. literally you're going to be teaching your brain how to respond more automatically. So I wasn't always a person who loved to exercise for joyful reasons and consistently, right? So there was a lot of unlearning that had to happen, a lot of unlearning and unwiring of the brain and then relearning and rewiring of the brain. So if you're just getting started, right, and you're you're expecting something like this, okay, yesterday I went on a run for punishment and today I'm going to go to yoga for not punishment. Like <laughs> you're still uh-huh. you're still going to have these thoughts, right? Like there's nothing magical that happens in a one day period. You're still going to have a thought about I hope I lose weight or you know, oh at least you're taking good of your care of yourself so you don't gain weight or at least you're making up for that brownie that you had. Like those thoughts and feelings will go away when you no longer need them. And so it's more about the fact that I said that my intention was I'm going to make time for myself to do yoga and I'm aware that I'm going to hear these voices about transforming my body or, you know, well, good thing that you're here today because you don't want to gain weight or you have to do something about your weight. It's about hearing that, but then pausing and taking that gentle, deep breath, thinking about your caregiver and just reframing your attention. Like, I'm here because I know yoga helps me practice breath. Um, It's a moving meditation for me. I'm here because it does help me feel good and give me energy. And regardless of what this voice says about, you know, punishing reasons, I'm finding my own reasons that are personally meaningful and different and better. So, So that would be, you know, the work that you're doing, that sort of day that you decide to make movement about something else. And then, you know, and practicing that over and again, and eventually your brain learns. But even think of all those other scenarios, right? When you don't get a work workouts in, whether it's because you're sick or too busy, responding with compassion. And I really do think that, yes, you know, building habits and routines are really important um, because they help you feel good about your well-being, but know that everything that you've ever done that was a product of diet culture leading up to this body kindness reframe there, it's very strong and powerful. And those words are going to be there and they're going to try and sabotage you to make it about body concern and weight concern and, you know, permission to eat something. And it's not about suddenly poof, that voice goes away. It's about hearing it and actively choosing my why and my intention and 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 doing what truly is good for you, which for some people, they might be taking a month or two off of all exercise because their body needs to rest and heal because they've been over exercising and they need a pause, right? And someone else, it's going to be over the next couple of months completing a couch to 5k. So that's the other thing, no matter where you are as a listener, it's probably going to be a little bit different. Same thing with movement or sleep, all those different things that you're, you've got to choose what you want to work on first, that it is about building a habit and that you're going to also be building self-compassion because nobody does this perfect. And all the messages you get when you try to practice body kindness, they're going to come back to you right? The habit is weight control. The habit is earning the right to eat a piece of cheesecake. That is the routine that you know, and you're working on actively dismantling that and reframing it. No, absolutely. And I'm really glad that you touched on habits, not necessarily always, you know, being something that you're physically, you know, seeing or doing. I mean, for me, one of the habits that I've been working on just in general is mental and emotional responses to the inner critic, the inner voice, culturally, you know, the the cultural bias. And I, I always have to remind myself that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm such a guy sometimes where I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, I need to do this. So I'm going to do this and I see it and I live it and I do it physically. 
but mentally and emotionally has been where a lot of my my struggle with habit forming is. How am I going to be kinder when I'm speaking to that inner critic? How am I going to combat that voice? These are some of the habits that I've been working on. That being said, I just want to encourage our listeners to go ahead and, and hear this episode all the way through. And I invite you to join us at the end when we talk about where we're at and just to catch up in general. Yeah, I'm excited to let you know about the habit that I'm struggling with too. (laughs) Sounds good. Books make great gifts and I would love to help you give the gift of body kindness this holiday season. Visit bodykindnessbook.com slash order and you can order one or save some money when you order six or more copies. Again, that's bodykindnessbook.com slash order. The price includes shipping in the United States, and I'm happy to customize those orders. Also, don't forget, Body Kindness will be available on audiobook starting December 25th, 2018. You can order it now with your Audible credit for this month, or you can do an Audible trial, and you'll actually be able to order it and get it free. So you can learn more at Audible by just searching for the term body kindness, and you'll find the page right there. Go ahead and pre-order. And then don't forget to visit bodykindnessbook.com slash presale. When you submit your proof of purchase, you will get some free goodies as a thank you for me where you can't get anywhere else. Happy holidays. Because the health and fitness world can get a little nutty, it's time for body kindness. Today we're going to talk about habits to help you create habits you'll love. And we're checking in on how we're both doing at our own body kindness goals. Hello and welcome to Body Kindness, where happiness and health begin by being good to yourself. I'm your host, your coach, and your guide, Rebecca Scritchfield, and I have the wonderful Bernie Salazar here with me again today. Hey, Becca, how are you? And thank you, everybody out there for listening in. Yes, I am so excited. I just got to say that we love the emails we're getting from everybody. We've got a great listener question today. If you like the show, please subscribe, share it with others, and post a rating and review as well. We'd appreciate that very much. Well, Bernie, I'm really excited to chat with you this week because it's all about the habit. And um, what can I say except for habits can be very exciting and they can also be a big pain in the butt if you don't know what you're doing when you're trying to create habits. So I'm really excited to just talk with you and help break it down. And the way I figure we get started is actually just give each other an update on how we're doing on our body kindness goals. And so I'm going to kick it to you and just fill me in. What are you working on? What's going well? and What's not going well? Well, I'll go ahead and start off on a great note. Uh, two things, actually. I have dedicated myself to really hydrating myself properly, but I really uh, dedicated myself to consuming more water. So I literally have kind of stuck to just that for the time being. And I'm already noticing a huge difference both in my complexion and even level of energy. I know before I was getting a little bit more headaches. Those have kind of seemed to already diminish. Um, So I'm very happy with that. Another thing that I've made some progress on is something that you actually suggested. And that was instead of really looking at the intensity of my workouts, I'm taking a very real step, and that's more so of the counting of the minutes that I'm able to invest in my workouts. Because let's face it, you know, I am a new dad. I I do have a full-time career as well. And I was beating myself up for a bit about the whole intensity thing. Again, you know where I'm coming from. Uh, My background is go, go, go. Try to beat out the person next to you. Um, And I always felt that that's where I needed to be. But recently what I've done is just count what it is that I'm doing because it counts. And believe me, it may not sound like this is a revolutionary thing, but for me, it is huge. Uh, We actually had a listener not too long ago submit a question talking about how they felt 
because the intensity of their workouts weren't necessarily up there, that they didn't count them. And when I sat back and thought about it and even heard your reply, I thought to myself, I'm doing the exact same thing. So if I'm here preaching body kindness, I got to be a little kinder to myself. And that's what's been going on. So uh, I've been really able to get in three and a half hours to four a week. And it may not sound like much, but it has really changed my outlook on exercise. And I'm just feeling better all around. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel great about it. And I really hope our listeners are tuning into that and listening to what I'm saying because, you know, sometimes we really underestimate what we can do. We we don't give enough credit to the five minutes here, the five minutes there. And I'm going to give credit to that. <laughs> and uh, And I feel good about it. Yeah, you know, the truth of the matter is there's nothing wrong with self-improvement. There's nothing wrong with asking yourself to do better and do more and push yourself harder. But there is the body kindness way of doing things where you have self-compassion. Um, you realize you're a human being and it's not going to be perfect out of the gate. And whenever is it truly perfect? In fact, you know, I think perfection is the enemy. I think striving to be perfect is something that, you know, you're never going to be satisfied with. And so, you know, the body kindness way of challenging yourself is setting a goal and getting started at at it and then repeating it over and again. And that's actually through the repetition what ends up allowing a habit to form eventually. But it comes with effort. And there is good research that actually shows that by taking an action, even if it seems small and insignificant, that it is a piece of memory for your brain. It is something that create caused your brain to learn and grow. And because it's an experience you gave yourself that you're more likely to do something again the next day and the next day and get into that repetition cycle. So truthfully, the most important thing is that you start. And the second most important thing would be that you continue on. So I would just encourage you, whatever you've started to keep doing. And certainly when you feel that sort of um, encouragement from yourself that it's time for a challenge, it's time to kick it up a notch, listen to that, you know, because there is, again, nothing wrong with saying, hey, I've got some goals. That's how people achieve things is by setting goals. But the goals should feel realistic for you and manageable, at least, you know, enough to the point that when you write them down and look at them, they excite you and they energize you and they feel like something you could accomplish. And that kind of sets you up for the right mindset to take action when you need to take action. And then that excitement and that reward you get from accomplishing something then feeds the desire to challenge yourself more. So I think that's a really important distinction because I think people um, have the tendency, that sort of no pain, no gain mentality. You know, if I'm not hating my exercise or if I'm not completely beating myself up in my head about, you know, how I'm not doing enough, you know, oh, tough love, I'll give myself tough love, then I'll get better. And that is just a recipe for disaster because that means that you lack the understanding and the self-compassion of your humanness. (laughs) Absolutely. And another thing that it's uh, allowed me to do is make peace with where I was and where I'm at now. And what I mean by that is I was, and you can vouch for me, I was running marathons, half marathons, you know, 5Ks. Uh, My time was was good. (laughs) It was really good. And Since then, I almost feel like if I can't run that fast or work out that intense, uh, then, you know, why bother? And the truth is, I needed to remind myself where I started. And that is definitely a different place now where I'm starting now. And it may be different in the future when we start. And when I say start, it's not necessarily just at this moment realizing that you have to start moving your body. No, every day for me is a start. And each day is going to give you something different. And you have to be at peace with it and know that at at minimum, you're actually getting out there and doing something. So you are 
doing great. And I know that I'm speaking to a lot of our listeners who were former athletes out there. I see you, captain of the football team, you know, captain of the softball team, uh, captain of the volleyball team. And it's funny because we tend to glorify those times as though, as if, you know, our body in its current state isn't doing um, exceptional things. And I've just come back to this point of giving myself credit. And again, I want to encourage our listeners, you know, wherever you're at now is a good place. We're just going to move forward and figure out how to get you to a place where you are just as happy with what your body is giving you because your body is working for you. Yeah. And just to touch on, since we're actually talking about like movement as a habit and everything, um, it is the body kindness way to respect your body. And that means connecting to it, listening to it. It might not feel like doing what you originally planned and being able to be flexible and deciding to do something else and letting that be good enough. Or you might feel that your body is really um, kind of dreading the workout that you've scheduled. And it kind of takes a little bit of self-coaching, and which you can do through self-compassion of just thinking about, you know, the pros and cons of your options. You know, I have a choice here. I could choose to not do the exercise I was going to do because then – as a benefit, I get to avoid the discomfort that I'm anticipating. Or I could choose to do the workout while I commit to staying connected to my body, checking in. I can always choose to stop if I feel that the discomfort isn't right. And I think that it takes a lot of mental strength to be able to do. But that is a key to forming habits too, is to be able to pause and think about your options and realize that, again, body kindness is whatever you define it to be. So nobody else is the expert on your body. If you're there and you know you need a rest day and it's not avoidance, you take a rest day because you have the inner wisdom to say this is what your body needs and you know it's not avoidance. Well, I was going to jump in and say, you know, as far as habits go, you're absolutely right. I am enjoying this approach so much better than what I associated working out with in the past that I do want to do it again. And I constantly am reminded by by this feeling um, when I look at kids. Kids aren't going to do anything that they don't like doing. Humans, we're not going to do anything that we don't like doing. So I'm really developing that love for movement again. And now I can honestly say I'm in a better place. So our listeners out there, like what you do, love what you do. You're investing not only yourself, but you know, you're, you're taking up your time. And, and that's what I'm finding again, Rebecca. You know, here's the thing. And I think this is where we can get into more talking about habits Right now for me, you know, nutrition, exercise, eating well, those types of things, they are pretty easy and effortless and it's part of, it's like breathing. I don't have to tell myself to do it. While there's always room to learn and grow, those are pretty easy. But this body kindness challenge, sorry, year of kindness challenge is new to me. And I set it as a goal because I wanted to recognize things both big and small that I did for myself and also I did for other people. You know, being really busy, you just kind of rush through life and you don't always recognize that you are connecting with others, supporting others. And I really wanted to take, I figured what, it would be a minute or two a day to reflect on that. And I was doing really good. I put it out there on New Year's Day and literally every day, I'm looking at my journal right now, but I made it every single day where I Instagrammed it. I had one little break and it was only a couple days. And I actually, the self-compassionate person I am, totally forgave myself. And I gave myself a little window. Okay. Yeah. 123 to 125 snowed in, cooked, shoveled, snuggled, slept, family time, guiltless pleasures. So I gave myself, a, you know, that wasn't, that was over a couple days, but it was one entry. And then now I'm looking and I haven't written an entry in a week. And I'm just really bummed about it because this is something that 
I set a goal. I was interested in it. I was excited about it. Those are all keys to setting body kindness goals, by the way. Um, it came from within. Nobody was pushing me. I was like, yes, let's go. And I know how to create habits. Consistency, consistency, consistency. So I picked something manageable that I could do. Not, I didn't have to create any special graphics, you know, just handwritten in my journal, take a photo, put it on Instagram. So simple. It was simple enough that I could start it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. But then something happened in <sighs> life <laughs> and I dropped it all together, right? So sound familiar? Like, you know, this oh, yeah. might not be eating or exercise, but this is it's the same pattern. It's something that requires effort that's not yet a habit. I gave myself a manageable routine and my job was to repeat the routine over and over and over again until it becomes an effortless habit. And so this is, you know, again, I'm just reflecting here. There's no judgment going on. But as I was thinking about it, you know, because the past three days I've told myself, hey, you got to get back to that. Hey, you got to get back to that. Hey, you got to get back to that. And I still haven't gotten back to it. And this is classic, you know, it's not yet a habit and you got to get back on the horse and you just got to start. You got to take an action. You got to do something. And I'm not, you know, it, it is, it's not the end of the world, but this is something that's important to me. I do care deeply about it. And the most important thing is for me to end the dry spell. So I have my journal in front of me and literally live, like while talking to you, I am going to write my entry. So you better come up with something to say because I'm going to write my, it. I'm going to write my entry so that I break my lack of habit streak right now and get back into my routine because I really do care about this habit. Well, I have a couple things to, to kind of say about what you've shared. First of all, I really do appreciate the fact that you are open and sharing the fact that, you know, getting exercise isn't uh, an issue for you. And coming from a person of various sizes throughout their life, the last thing you want to hear is, oh, this person has no problems doing what is literally kicking my butt. And then you went to the nutrition and from a nutritionist, you're saying you're doing pretty spot on as far as really nourishing yourself. And I just want to start by, first of all, congratulating you. And I don't mean that as an, oh, look at you. It's just when it comes to habits, you have them. And that's wonderful. And that's what I love about our show, Rebecca, is that we are not trying to you know, say, oh, if you're struggling with this, those are the only people that should be listening to the show. No way. I would love to hear more from people who um, have developed these great habits. You know, um, what helped you to do that is what I'm asking our, you know, listeners. And I want to ask you that in a minute. Another thing too, when it comes to your year of kindness, I can vouch for you. You may not have Instagrammed them or written them down, but I do remember back in January uh, when you know snow Mageddon hit. Oh, over there where you're at. And I remember some of the best pictures that you put on Instagram were of your little girls out there enjoying the snow and really participating um, in the moment. And I know you were there because you were snapping the picture and the joy that came across their face just kind of uh, shone through uh, on your feed. So you may not have necessarily snapped that picture or written that letter, but I, I can guarantee you that there was a lot of kindness going on there. And I know your little girls appreciated that. Um, so to all our listeners out there, you know, I encourage you to share with us, you know, not only um, how did you develop some habits that you've developed, but I want to talk to you about, you know, how you can really move forward in, in creating that routine um, so that you can you know, develop these habits long term. Uh, I don't know. I just, me and habits, Rebecca, I'm glad we're talking about it because, <laughs> you know, I do have barriers when it comes to sticking to them. And that leads me to my, to my next question. Why? You said that there was something in a little life event that took place that kind of hindered the actual posting of 
your year of kindness. What what was it? Oh, I don't know if it was one thing, but I think well, gosh, that's a really interesting question. I think lately I've been stressed out trying to finish out my manuscript which we haven't said on the show, but yes, I am writing a book. Yay. Yay. Congratulations. (laughs) Yes. Uh, So my husband's author. Yay. Well, hopefully. Well, no, it will. It just won't be for a little while. You're going to do great. (laughs) But um, my husband's been traveling for work and um, I just, so just, you know, with the kids and thankfully my awesome mother-in-law is in town and she's like, taken my husband's place, actually doing a lot more than he typically does. So. <laughs> <We're not gonna laughs> I'm so glad that she's here. Um, but, you know, so there is support and it's not that, but I, yeah, I just think that it's, you know, like anyone struggling to create any habit, life happens and gets in the way and you miss it one day. And if you don't have a plan, if you don't acknowledge that you missed it, And again, that's part of self-compassion. Self-compassion is like owning up to mistakes. So, well, let me take a step back first. You have to be aware that you goofed up. So, but Mm -hmm. yeah, the the day I didn't record, I definitely remember, oh yeah, you didn't record today. Yawn, yawn, you're going to bed, you know? So there was, I kind of busted that commitment, right? Now it could have been stress, stuff going on, whatever, um, but it, I had a momentary lapse of I wasn't reminded how important it was to me to keep doing it. Well, not um, just that. What did you just do right now? You literally took the time to mm-hmm. to make an effort to get back into it. And listeners, that's what it's all about. At least for me, Rebecca, you know, that's what it's all about is acknowledging the fact that, hey, there are bumps in the road. You know, there could be traveling husbands. You could be writing a book like Becca or you literally could just be so exhausted that you have decided not to do that on that day. But there is always another day. Um, and my goal for myself and hopefully for our listeners is to make sure that that goal or that day doesn't come next year. <laughs> you know, let's get back on it as soon as possible because, you know, I I am a huggy person. And if you ever meet me in person, you, you most likely will get a hug. But we also have to be very honest. And, you know, there's, you know, tomorrow's another day. You know, you can keep saying that until it's a whole other year. So um, I just like the fact that you took initiative right now to to get back on your goal. And to our listeners out there, I hope that you're taking that as a cue. You know, if right now, now you're kind of in on a break from your goals to go ahead and get started back in so that we can form those healthy habits. Yeah. The the second you become aware that you made a mistake or you didn't follow through on something, that is golden, you know, because that's going to start the chain of, okay, I'm aware. And then you engage in your self-compassion, you know, the simplicity of it's okay. It's okay. Exactly. It's going to be okay. Owe it to I'm going to be okay. You owe it to yourself to get back into it because let me tell you what, you can't hide from yourself. And a lot of times, believe me, I've tried. Um, <laughs> you can't hide from yourself. You're going to be in your head. Sometimes it's it's just so much more difficult emotionally, mentally, physically to to not do what you know is going to get you to a better place. I know for me, the days I don't work out, the days I, I, I eat um, a lot of what isn't nourishing me properly are the days where mentally and emotionally I go ahead and really let myself have it. And if I would have just followed through on, on that habit, it would just be so much better for me in the long run. Yeah. Well, so you bring up something interesting because you actually, I think are starting to bring up the difference between guilt and shame. And it's an important topic. We'll touch on it today. But I love it how we talk and it gives me all these podcast ideas. We should have (laughs) a total show on guilt and shame. Yes, Uh, I love it. (laughs) Not exactly a light topic, but you mentioned that, you know, being in your head and that you'd be really hard on yourself if you did something, if you made a mistake. So what that says to me is that you have values, life values that are really important to you around self-care and body kindness. There are things that you're trying to do. And when you make choices that aren't aligned with your values, there are mistakes. When you get uh, yeah, too yeah. hard on yourself about it, or I'm not saying you, you or people, I don't know if you mm-hmm. can relate to this or mm-hmm. not, but when a person gets too hard on themselves about a mistake – 
that is tends to be where they are sort of black and white, all or nothing thinking, perfectionism type thinking. And um, my favorite, favorite, what do we call her? She's a researcher and an author and a guru, Brene Brown. She's an expert on shame. And she says, I forget exactly, but it's like when shame is driving, perfectionism is riding shotgun or vice versa. They're best buddies is the bottom line. And so the difference between guilt and shame is shame is I'm a bad person. You know, God, who wants to be a bad person, you know, and guilt is I did a bad thing. So know the difference. It's okay if you feel guilty. You talked about eating a lot and not respecting your body. Should you feel guilty? Well, maybe a little, you know, but it's more like a reflection. And you know what? It's real important to me that I do choose what I want and I enjoy my food, but it's also important to me that I stay connected and respect my body, respect my fullness. You know, I'm really working on that. I'm working on those intuitive eating skills. And you evaluate, some things happened. Was it an emotional trigger? Were you just happy? Was it just too good? You didn't even think about it. And that's where it can get the most uncomfortable. You don't want to face the reality of what happened. And, you know, let yourself feel guilty. You know, I feel bad that I did this because you can forgive yourself and move on, which is what you're coaching folks to do here today. I can hear it in your voice. Oh, yeah. But it's when you feel shame, like I'm a bad person. That is what makes people want to run because nobody wants to be shamed. I mean, it's it's a horrible, strong, negative emotion, and we don't want to feel it. And actually not wanting to feel sh- – feeling shame, not wanting to feel it, not wanting to deal with it actually leads to more of the behavior that causes shame in the first place. And you're downward spiraling at that point, and that is not body kindness. No, no, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, you know, I'd like to share, and Rebecca, I'd love for you to chime in after I share this, is, you know, it almost, it took a lot of work for me to replace my more nourishing habits with ones that weren't. My body fought me on some of the poor decisions that I was making for myself. And it's really interesting to me how I worked through that. And it's the opposite way around. In order to form negative habits, I literally had to get rid of these good ones. And that in and of itself was a process. So I'm thinking, well, if it's going to take work either way, whether it's to form good ones and know that that's going to be hard work or form bad ones to replace the good ones and knowing that that was hard work, you know, I want to err on the side of forming the good ones or put (laughs) work into forming the good ones. I'm telling you, my body, and I may sound crazy here, but my body fought me on incorporating a lot of these negative habits into my life, but I just was steadfast in making sure that, that I, <laughs> you I, were committed you know, to your bad habits. <laughs> I, was, I was committed. Absolutely. And you know, we laugh about it, but think about it. Are you committed? I'm talking to your listeners. Are you committed to forming bad habits? Maybe through your inaction, if you're not proactive in doing it, maybe through your inaction, that's what's going on. Becca, do I sound nuts here or... Um, you no, know, it sounds like you maybe have gone through, a, um, I mean, something, something happened or changed even in a small sense in your life, stress, job changes, you know, things like that, um, or, or even a more gradual shift that might have impacted, you know, your sense of self-compassion, self-esteem, self-worth, or just the confidence of that this is who Bernie is, you know? And, and I mean, I've known you for a long time and my guess is that, you know, we, we talked about this when we first started podcasting together, but that there was, I think you're still trying to figure out who like the real healthy lifelong inside and out Bernie is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, um, as as a human being, uh, we reach various stages in our life where we do have to reevaluate who we are in this new skin or situation um, or place in our life. And it's not <laughs> easy, um, but it is worth doing. And you're, you're right. I'm still, 
you know, constantly defining and and un- trying to understand what health looks like for me. And I think that's a very healthy question to ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, once we're able to ask those types of questions, you know, the next step is, I feel, molding into that person and, and becoming that person. Yeah. Well, you know, some important steps. Um, you mentioned it was hard work. And, you know, I'm not going to disagree with you there. I mean, I try to take the mindset of benefit finding. So um, to take a step back from there, you start with your values, things you care about. You set goals based on your values. Um, goals are behaviors that you can. It's not a goal to say, you know, this is what I want to weigh. This is the size pants I want to be in. That is not a goal. You can't control it. A goal is behavior. So you set these goals and then you commit to taking actions that are in line with your values and goals, essentially. And that's kind of like the framework of putting together habits. And then it's about repeating them consistently, like I talked about earlier. So it is definitely hard work. There are ups and downs and good days and bad days and good moments and bad moments and mistakes. And, you know, I think that, you know, as much as I like to take the angle of do what you love and find the joy, and I do believe you can find joy and satisfaction in all of your choices, that doesn't mean that everything is, you know, rainbows and clouds and (laughs) completely effortless unicorns and stuff. There are challenges and work, but as you so eloquently pointed out, both decisions can be hard work. Both types of habits can be hard work. And so it's up to you to choose. You do have the choice. It's up to you to choose what goals do I want to set? What habits do I want to create? And I would just ask listeners to really think about the habits you have now, the habits you would like to form, why you want to form those habits, and commit yourself to them and stay committed to them. And hopefully this framework of body kindness is helpful for you and guiding you to be good to yourself, take good care of yourself. No matter what you do, it matters and it counts, and you build and grow stronger and healthier and happier from there. You know, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I mean, that's definitely why I'm part of the podcast. And I hope that that's why our listeners are listening in. Um, we There's always room for uh, positive, nourishing improvement. And uh, I, I absolutely love this conversation because habits is something that, you know, sometimes people say, you know, and they get this feeling of it's a big, bad word, you know, this habit. But it doesn't have to be. It could be an opportunity for you to really explore who you are, commit to yourself, and get out there and 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 um, and and do what you know is nourishing for your body and you know your health all around. Right, I love it. Well, we're going to be checking in with each other on um, our goals and habits again in future shows. But I think we had a really great conversation today about some of the key um, necessary components of building habits. And, um, you know, keep in mind that if we're not doing rigid diet plans or, you know, any of that other stuff that's out there that calls them it health, but we know is really not, what are we doing? And, and what I think we're doing is we're taking good care of ourselves. We're having fun doing it. And we're, we're creating habits that we love, that we can live with, that are flexible and fun and that are uniquely defined by, our, by ourselves and our own standards and nobody else. Well, welcome back, Bernie. Absolutely. Thanks for having me again, especially on this episode. This episode really did a lot for me, Rebecca. I had mentioned a little bit about just how I was working at the time um, and had done pretty well with my water intake. I'm happy to say that that's something that because it really did make my body feel better, I've continued to this day. So the majority of what I tend to drink is water. Now it sometimes comes in the form of coffee and other things, and that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> me and much too, needed, me and too. Much needed, but it is there. 
Um, I also talked about giving myself more credit about uh, counting the the smaller movements, the not as intense movements, giving them their place as as movement as something that is a, a caring gesture that I'm making for my body. Mm-hmm. So those are things that I've I've continued to incorporate to this day, and I'm really I'm really glad that I have because mm-hmm. I think it's it's made me just an overall happier person. Um, let's just start with that. Um, but that being said, you know, Rebecca, I always feel like it's you being awesome and checking in with me. I want to check in with you. I mean, do you struggle with habits um, mm-hmm. as well? I mean, you are human, right? Yeah, I'm totally <laughs> human. Yeah, no, um, I, 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 I definitely want to share uh, like something very specific of a real challenge that I'm dealing with because it it has all the elements of kind of how to try to dissect it all without a judgment and just the different things that come out to be to be a motivator. And so I'll, I'll use that example and then we'll just kind of see how we might be able to relate that to something that you're struggling with, you kind of building as a habit and just kind of see how we can go. So my story is, um, let me see. So when was it? It must have been around three months ago. I was taking in my um, my daughters for their dental checkups, and I was getting mine too. And I also have aligners like for keeping your teeth straight and everything. And that's a mm-hmm. whole long story. My nickname in high school was Bucky. I was very much teased for my appearance. So yeah, I still, as an adult, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wow. So it's just, you know, I mean, I, I, I did get braces um, at some point when I could afford them. And, you know, I think people are always going to get teased for everything. But it's it's one of those things that as an adult, you know, I was like, I, I just want to have something that helps me keep my teeth organized, I guess, is the lack, for lack of a better word. <laughs> and so I still have a liner. So anyway, and then you can imagine also being a busy parent you're supposed to wear the aligners at night only. And I would forget. And then, so I'd put them on in the morning and like you mentioned drinking coffee. I drink coffee with the aligners in, right? Or I take them out, (laughs) then drink coffee, then put them back in, take them out to eat, put them back in during the day. It's almost like this, like rather than fix the habit of wearing the liners when I'm supposed to. And, you know, I was doing it during the day or haphazardly. I'd forget for weeks and I put them in and they'd be tight and I'd be like, oh no, you know? And so I'd shove them back in my mouth. And so all this is to say that when I was having my appointment, my, my numbers for my gums had gone up And I definitely care about my health and something else that was my oral health and something else that was important, you know, to also know how this all fits in is that we didn't have a health insurance. So I didn't have a regular pediatrician growing up, let alone a dentist. So I am sure I was taken to the dentist at some point and, you know, because I have fillings. So I don't know if we just ended up paying cash. I, you know, it would be interesting to know to ask, you know, but I know we did not have regular checkups. And I know that now that I have dental insurance, it's it's really important to me to go to the appointments and everything. So this isn't like I just don't care, you know. So that sort of my my gum, you know, and they said, well, we see a lot of inflammation in your gums, your numbers are higher. And they weren't, they weren't all bleeding, but there in a couple spots there were some pushes that got some bleeds, which is a, a sign of inflammation, but also a sign of early gum disease. Uh-huh. And so I'm hearing that. And I'm like, you know, I'm in the chair and I'm I, I'm totally rushed with shame, totally rushed with shame. <laughs> like you're a nutrition expert and self-care and well-being. And, you know, and the truth of it was there would definitely be days where I, you know, if you think about it, I wasn't putting my aligners in before bed because I would not even brush my teeth before bed. So instead of brushing twice a day, I might be lucky to brush once. I uh-huh. definitely wasn't flossing. And so here we are. And so anyway, I I, I was felt all this shame, practicing self-compassion. And I said, well, let me tell you about what I'm doing with my aligners. And they they couldn't believe it. Like they're like, 
no judgment to you, Rebecca, but you're basically what you're doing is you're protecting the bad bacteria that is forming on your teeth and you're sealing it in with your aligners so they can do all this damage to your gums because you're wearing them during the day and take and taking them out what when you eat but there's bacteria on your teeth after you eat and then you're putting the aligner to it, which is just allowing them to thrive, you know, Uh plus damaging the aligners. And then, so, I mean, the, the point of it is, is it was this rock bottom and they're like, look, we want to see you in three months, but we need you to, um, use a toothpaste for your gum health. And we need you to make sure you brush twice a day, use a toothpaste for your gum health. You need to floss and you need to use your mouthwash. So, and that's the interesting thing is that I have I have all those resources at home. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And there was so many fits and starts uh-huh. to doing all this. It's like that first is like, okay, like I, I ended up deciding to get a water pick uh-huh. because like for the flossing, because I was like, okay, if there's a machine on the counter looking at me, maybe that will make a difference. Wouldn't you know, it was probably at least two of the three month window of my appointment until I even looked at the instructions and used it. I, I, I at least used it, but it sat there and stared at me for a while. So I'm speaking to any listener who ever joined that membership, that yoga place and didn't go, or you bought the healthy food and then you threw it away. Like, like this is the exact thing. It has nothing to do. Like I, I was, I care deeply about my gum health. I got good and helpful information about what it could improve it. I was still a busy person. It's, it was not a habit to do any of these things except for like, there was a habit for sure brushing in the morning, but making sure I could brush at night was not a habit. So I got Uh the, so as you learn about what builds a habit, one of the things that you could do is you could attach something that you're not remembering to do to something that you'll never forget. So for example, um, I'm always going to remember my morning coffee, right? So like putting a note inside a coffee cup at night that says, um, don't forget to floss today. Like that would be a trigger. Like, yes, I have to make that happen because I'm always going to remember my coffee cup. Right. And so I decided with, okay, so my girls get baths at night. I'm going to have them brush their teeth in the bath. And when they brush their teeth, I'm going to brush my teeth and Uh that totally worked for a while. But as you know, as a parent, we don't always bathe our kids every day. So my kids get three baths, three to four baths a week. So Uh on those days when I remembered, you know, because I think about my kids and here's their toothbrushes. Okay. All three of us together will brush our teeth at the same time. So, so it's things like that. It's like, because it, And literally, it is not that I don't care about brushing my teeth at night. I know it's important, right? The same way you might hear a red and body kindness um, for eating, be hungry, balance your plate and savor your meal, you know, And, and, and you have that wisdom and it makes sense, but it takes a lot of steps to accomplish a goal of eating more balanced because you have to plan it. You have to have it in the house. You have to prep it ahead. So it's just, just because you have that knowledge does not make it a habit. Right. And so it's the same thing. I had all this knowledge and then you have to, you have to purposely take this action. So I was like, okay, here they go. You know, here I am with their toothbrushes in mine. And we like play these silly games and that felt good. And so I'd get that nighttime brush in and I'd get the mouthwash in. Um, but the flosser still sat there. Um, and then, and then finally it was the pending appointment of going back for the three month that I was like, you've got to start flossing. You're going to do it right now. You're going to drop everything and do it right now. And, and that's another helpful thing, you know, like say it's something around movement. And you're aware that yet again, it's not happening. Just literally stop everything you're doing and take a 10 minute walk, right? Or like five jumping jacks right in place. Like that is literally proof that you're not going to delay something any longer. So you could literally, I'm not joking. If you're listening to me and you've been wanting to exercise, stand up while you're listening or go on a walk and finish the show, but like literally do five jumping jacks. And because what that says is like, I do care about movement and I understand that taking immediate action is what is rewarding to my brain and is what teaches my brain that this is important. So like things like that have really helped me. So where I'm at right now, I'm, I like when this is live, I would have already been back to the dentist. Um, so hooray. And I'm hoping for, like, I can tell you, I consistently use the gum health toothpaste. 
I am more consistent at AM and PM brushes. When I brush, I definitely do mouthwash. So those two are purposely linked. Um, and those are real important for the gum health. And I'm probably generously three to four days a week doing the water pick. Um, oh, good. Yeah. So I'm hopeful for this appointment that they're going to see improvement. I have not noticed any bleeding, even using the water pick. I hope I'm going to get an update that there's less inflammation, that they're noticing improvements to gum health. And that's going to feel really rewarding because those are the motivators for these actions. And, you know, the way you could translate that to, you know, practicing body kindness, right? It's letting go of all the aesthetic elements and stopping to think about what do you want to do? Not, not how do you want to feel, but like, what do you want to do about your sleep? What do you want to do about your movement? What do you want to do about your eating habits? And think about something that you can actually control. And then I want you to think of something that's small and workable. Like I, I did not for one second say seven days a week and without failure, twice a day, plus mouthwash, plus uh, flossing, plus um, your toothpaste, plus the mouth, I don't know, whatever, all that list. If I had perfectionism, then I probably would have done nothing because it would have felt too overwhelming. So I asked myself, what can I do that's workable and start there? And then how can I add to this? So, so that's my story of my struggle. And I'm, I'm still struggling. It's not, you know, I, I want to be somebody who brushes their teeth AM, PM, seven days a week. And when I do that, I know, I know for sure the mouthwash will get in there and then I can keep working on the flossing um, part of it because I have the resources and it's, it's not that I don't care. It's just, here's what's happening. And this is where, and this is a non-judgmental, like self-reflection, hard truth. When you aren't making something a habit, it's because it's not taking a priority over other things. And that's just the bottom line. And it is okay. But it's like, when I am not doing the water pick, it's because my habit is choosing something else over it, right? So like I, I, I brushed my teeth this morning, but I didn't water pick yet today, right? So I'm choosing podcasting with you over the water pick. And, and that's okay. It's just that if I care about my gum health, I also have to make sure that I make time for the water pick too. Does that make yeah, sense? And, yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, that story, your story and what you're doing right now really resonates with me uh, in a different, in a, you know, in a different area, mm -hmm. but for our listeners as well, I mean, you know, this is what Rebecca is working on, but I mean, I, I know of family members who are dealing maybe with the management of their diabetes or, you know, high blood pressure, um, and still, you know, have that information and thank goodness you were comfortable enough with your dentist to say, to be honest, Hey, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, doing the aligners in and out at these odd times. And what happened as a result of your honesty was they were able to pinpoint maybe something that's contributing ne negatively to your health. Um, so that I applaud you for. And second, to, to, to be realistic about how you're going to approach this, you know, that's, that's amazing. And I think that that's something that hopefully our listeners gain something from as well is, you know, let's be honest in our approach and how we are going to start working on forming this habit and, and hopefully make it um, a habit that is, is staying with us for the long run. Um, so th thank you for sharing that. And I think that, you know, for me, I'm going to fill you in on something that I know I need to be working on mm -hmm. um, and that I want to actually not have be a habit. Uh, and that is uh, after a long day, you know, uh, of, of working and being with my daughter, um, or just everything that life throws at you, I tend to, uh, lay down and as I'm getting ready to go to sleep, my little hand creeps towards my phone mm. and I find myself engaged in mindless surfing of whether it be Instagram or Facebook or reading emails, um, and I find that that bedtime that I thought I was going to be able to kind of get uh, right and get the sleep that I, I know my body needs in being pushed back and I'm waking up the next day feeling a lot more tired, not as ready to tackle my day. 
And then it leads to that negative self-talk of, well, had you just gone to bed when you had laid down, you wouldn't be feeling this way. And then I find myself saying, well, we got to muscle through this one. And that's all conversations that I, I know, you know, through our work and through my time really living kinder that I, I can avoid if I, you know, maybe set a particular time where I'm going to allow myself to do that. If that's something that I, I choose to still want to maintain, you know, where I'm checking really briefly, but then having a hard, a hard stop, you know, um, and really doing my best to whether I, whether I'm going straight to bed or not have having a harder stop on how long I'm going to allow, uh, you know, the, the mindless technology rule or yeah. have an effect over my sleep. Do, do, so, so you're, you're feeling like it. So one of the potential challenges is that delays falling asleep, um, from the screen, right. It can delay melatonin, but also depending on the content that you're looking at, oh, it could kind of create energy yes. in your body. Twofold. Twofold. Absolutely. So, and I find that that light just in general, even after I shut it off, I'm still seeing it. Um, so that's not good, but you really hit on something that also affects me as well, which is the content, you know, mm -hmm. whether it be something that's going on in our, in, in our world, you know, then I find myself thinking about, oh gosh, this or that, or maybe I need to be planning for retirement more. Or maybe I should learn to juggle. I I mean, anything <laughs> that, that, you know, is in your feed, you end up seeing and you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so, so all of those things. And I, I think that that's something, you know, that I just really liked what you said, you know, you, you, you start forming habits and you do things that, that you value. Mm -hmm. And, um, I need to start valuing my sleep more because I'm feeling the effects of, of a broken, you know, diminished sleep pattern. Yeah. Well, and, and this is something that I would definitely encourage you, um, you know, as you, I don't know if, you know, are thinking about taking some meaningful action in this area, but sleep is definitely a foundation that can impact our daytime energy, our creativity, um, because it can impact energy. It may impact the energy that you might have to put toward a workout, um, I mean, it could interfere with our abilities to drive, you know, so, so it's, it's certainly something to take seriously. Um, our sleep also triggers like getting enough sleep helps us to also get enough of the hormones that we need in our body that just help us regulate our hunger and fullness, um, yes. and signals to eat. So literally when you're sleep deprived, your body, like your cells are saying we need energy. Well, that's a call for sugar and there's nothing wrong with sugar. There's nothing wrong for donuts at breakfast. I love that idea, but if you are sleep deprived and in this habit for the, that the morning, like you need this surge of sugar, that could actually be a sleep deprivation. Not, I really feel like enjoying a donut or a cinnamon roll this morning. And those are, so they're just two different things, you know, but I would consider other routines you could do with your phone that don't involve having, um, the light or having the interaction where you have to read. Um, and a few come to mind for things that I do, I will do audiobook. So Mm -hmm. Um, I have been listening to Michelle Obama's Becoming, which is like the best selling book of the world, uh, this year. Um, and it's been great. So for some reason I can have the audio book playing and then my eyes are closed and I'm not, not looking at my phone at all. And it could be playing on low. You could have earphones in and you hear it and you're paying attention, but then you still drift off to sleep. So the one downside is you have to kind of remember when you wake up the next morning, like, Oh, the whole book played or something like that. And you have to kind of remember where, where you remember leaving off. Um, so mm -hmm. th there is kind of a downside to that. And I will say that sometimes I'll fall asleep to the book and then I'll wake up like three hours later and the book is still playing and I'll hear it. So I'll have to turn it off and then go back to bed. So it might, it, I'm not saying that it's the number one go-to, but it's, I think it's better to listen to something. If you have an active mind at night, it's better to listen to something and not look and read and you're, you'll likely fall asleep. Um, or if you read, read with like a bedside light and an actual book in your hand, you'll get lulled yeah. to sleep and then turn I the light out. I think for me, that might be more realistic. And the mm -hmm. reason is, first of all, I, I enjoy the physical, uh, you know, of, 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 so it's, it's, it's the touching, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's even the act of, mm -hmm. of, of doing it. So that would be a good substitute. And I am one of those people and I, I guys, uh, listeners, I'm gonna let you in on how weird I am. I do. I, 
it would drive me crazy to think, oh my gosh, where'd I leave off? Uh-huh. Like I am really, I'm one of those people like, oh gosh, now I got to figure out where <laughs> I'm back at. So if I can just put in a bookmark or something yep. like that, that, it's that easier. would work. But, but you know, the bigger thing for me is that I know I'm tired. Yeah. I, I know I'm tired. Mm-hmm. I know that if I just lay there for even allow myself three to five minutes, mm-hmm. I am going to be asleep. Asleep. Well, so, there's also an element of FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Yes. Oh, let me see what but, so-and-so has yeah. going on or one last. I mean, I do that too. But, you know, one last I Facebook guess. scan, one last. I, I, it's funny. I, I love being on social media and connecting you know, to listeners, readers, people I know, and like friends and family. And the other hand, I also hate social media because it can be Uh a massive time suck and Uh it can be stressful. No, it is. There's times (laughs) where you look up and you're like, what did I just do? You know? So, I mean, for me, it's just limited. And and here's the thing. I I, I tend to always go back to um, being a father and my daughter. And the last Mm -hmm. thing I want is for her to develop this particular habit. I mean, our children are going to be confronted with technology in their lives in a way that we never were. Mm -hmm. And I would really want to, from an early age, model uh, um, moderation, model time and place, Mm -hmm. um, and place an emphasis on relationships yeah. and, and, and personal connections. Mm-hmm. So you're right. That's I, where I'm at. Yeah. And I have one other idea for you too, that it is still on the listening track, but, um, guided meditations. Um, so whether it's loving kindness meditation or ambient music, um, a lot of times people struggle with fitting that in anyway, and they have guided, you know, if you look up yoga Nidra, it's called yoga sleep and there'll uh-huh. be a guided, it, you literally lay in bed, but it guides you to relax, um, certain parts of your body. And I could, I could get into that. That's something that I definitely could do because, um, it allows me, it allows my brain to continue kind of going on. Um, and it is guided and there is purpose behind it. So that's something that I I would definitely look into. Cool. Well, this has been really fun and I hope listeners at least get the idea to kind of get a little bit more help and support around habits and the purpose and the meaning. And that literally you're working with your brain, give it a chance to learn and grow, give it a chance to get that called neuroplasticity. It's like the wiring that it needs in order to make something more effortless. Um, and just know that we, we struggle with things too. And and we just kind of keep on trying and, you know, I think it's, you want to look at it more of an approach mindset. So how do I approach this thing that I care about where I can make a different choice or a different meaningful action? How do I approach this rather than, you know, avoiding it because it can't live up to some unrealistic ideal? So, you know, and and just kind of keep your mind focused on it's about habits. It's about behaviors. It's about connecting positive emotions with positive experiences and also things that are workable in my busy, hectic life, you know? Absolutely. And to our listeners, good luck with your habit forming. And thank you so much for listening in. Yes, I am going to um, go do my water pick as soon as we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have Sounds to go to bed good. because it's the daytime. Yeah, you know what? I'm okay with that. We're going to go ahead and start, take action now. Our listeners are doing our their jumping jacks. Rebecca's going to water pick. And guess what? Yeah. I am going to bed. <laughs> nice. Take care, Bernie. Bye. And that's a wrap on today's show. Let's continue the conversation on Facebook. Just search Body Kindness Podcast and click to join. And if you can contribute to the production costs for the 2018 podcast season, visit gofundme.com slash bodykindness. We love ratings and reviews. Please do that. And don't forget to let your friends know that Body Kindness is one of your can't miss podcasts. If you have questions, comments, or guest recommendations, shoot me an email, Rebecca at bodykindnessbook.com. 